All right, so as you may have seen in parts one and two, we uh, we are starting to design and finally designing uh, the 3D printed uh, rocket in 3D Studio Max. And uh, in part three now, we're going to show you how we made the really cool smoke effects, uh, which was actually a cool particle simulation in 3D Studio Max, so that we can go ahead and print that as the stand for the rocket. So check it out now. So now that we had a really cool rocket uh, that we wanted to uh, to share with you, um, we needed a stand for it. And from day one, we always thought, how cool would it be to have a stand that was kind of made out of smoke? Uh, you know, a smoke stand. And, you know, the inspiration for this was kind of those 1990-ish, mid-1990s uh, Batman uh, animated feature uh, smoke trails. So I don't know if you remember the 1990s Batman animated series where the smoke would, like, billow out and curl down the street. I know it was 2D, but it felt like this really cool billowing smoke that would like pour down the street. So I was like, how could we make that in 3D? Um, you know, if you if you just straight up modeled it, it might be kind of complicated. So in this case, I said, you know, maybe we make an actual simulation. So in this particular uh, uh, you know scene, we started with uh, essentially, let me go ahead and isolate this. We basically started with this. This was a simulation to show a particle effect that would then pour out like smoke. Now, the cool thing about particles in a, a lot of programs, uh, in particular in 3D Studio Max, is that you can have, um, this happens to be wind affecting it, there happens to be a, a deflector which deflects it off the ground, and there happens to be gravity. So, in this case, we started with a particle system, which is a, a particle array. It's uh, what's called mesh, let me go to it. Uh, it's meta par particles. So when these particles get close together, they actually make a mesh. So as they get certain more dense in certain areas, they create an actual physical mesh. Well, that's really cool because as you start the simulation, we had to animate along this path that you see here and spit out particles along the way. Uh, it might kind of lag here, but I'm just going to go to the end. You'll see by the end, it's this really cool pattern of particles. And if I isolate that, that was kind of the beginning of our smoke trail, and this took a lot of a lot of the trial and error to get just the right smoke trail and the right wind and the right deflecting and everything else. But in the end, this is what we came up with as far as a smoke trail, and this is a very good starting point as a mesh to then go ahead and modify and tweak so that we had like a cool starting smoke pattern. Uh, you'll see some of the other kind of failed patterns. We took that initial one and made uh, meshes out of them. Uh, this one was kind of blobby, and it didn't really, you know, it didn't really capture what we were, were kind of going for with this kind of billowing smoke. It looked just kind of like a splat. Um, this one over here was similar. I think we actually took this main first one and tried to modify it and add these mesh smooths and melt modifiers, and it got a little bit flat and boring. Um, you'll see this one here was a completely failed test where we were trying to do another particle simulation that didn't really pan out. It, it was supposed to go in this bowl and kind of like curve around and it didn't really turn out the way we wanted. Um, I think the final was actually, I think we took this, uh, I don't know why it's turned blue, but we took this one, which is a kind of a copy from the original and where we were modifying a little bit more. And then we were starting to get what we wanted where we had these kind of curved edges and a little bit flat spot in the center. If you look from the top, we tried to make it so that you know, there's somewhat, the center of gravity is somewhat, you know, if the rocket's here, the center of gravity would be kind of towards the center of the, the base. So, in the end, we took something between, I think, this and the uh, the original one here, and we ended up making our final model, which is basically that. So, this model was really neat. Uh, I'm going to isolate it here. What we did was take the original model, oh, it's in a group, so ungroup that. It, uh, we, we took the that particle system, made a copy as a mesh, and then started tweaking the the um, the polygons. So we made an edible poly. Uh, let's see, these are off. We actually took the original vertices, and so this is the original mesh here. You can kind of see these triangles. I'm turn off the edge faces here. Uh, oh, that's right. It's a it's a different modifier, but uh, anyway. So if you take these these vertices, uh, we, we use something called soft selection. If you turn that off, then you can go ahead and just modify one individual vertice. So you see how crazy that is. But if you turn on soft selection, you can actually select groups of vertices. And it's based upon a fall-off curve, which is here. 
So if I tweak this number here, you'll see that those colors change depending on how much you're going to affect the vertices nearby. So if I reduce the number, I'm just affecting closed vertices. Anyway, that's really useful because we took the original model and you can also rotate. So that's where we started creating this kind of billowing smoke effect where it's like it's billowing around. You know, there, there, maybe here. You know, it's billowing in. Obviously, this is extreme, but when we started with the original mess, there was no billowing smoke, and that's what we wanted. So now it feels like it's kind of the rocket took off and the smoke is curling back around because of the smoke or whatever. So that's where we started and got our base mesh from, and then we started adding modifiers. Now, as we added these modifiers, we you'll see that this, is <laughs> this cylinder's floating here because the modifiers aren't active yet. So we took our original polygon, our poly mesh, and we started adding uh, mapping coordinates, which is something we used for a future uh, modifier for, for displacing. We added a relax, which kind of the, rea the relax kind of smooths it out. See it a tiny bit. Turn it on. Just smooths it a little bit so it doesn't have as much jagged edges. Well, then we went ahead and went to displace. What displace did was, let me turn these other ones off above it. So displace made, we, we wanted the, the, the smoke to have a little bit more like character and depth and kind of like, you know, density. So we added a, a displace modifier, which actually will displace the mesh and give it more geometry. But we use noise, a noise map as the, the displace map, which means that it gave this really crazy noisy kind of, you know, addition to the, to the smoke. This is nice because it gave it more definition and more depth. Uh, but obviously in this configuration, it's a bit crazy. <laughs> it doesn't look nice. So we took that and then we started cleaning that up. And we took melt. We melted down. Uh, we use this modifier called melt to kind of flatten out the bottom of the smoke so that when you print it, it's flat in the bottom. And then we did a relax modifier, which kind of smoothed it out and relaxed it again, which smoothed it out more and then relaxed it a third time. <laughs> which smoothed it out more. So we still had some of that definition and some of that character, but it kind of kept smoothing it out. Uh, we did a cap holes because I think there were some holes in the model. And then we ended it with a mesh smooth. So the mesh smooth took what was there and added a lot more geometry. So I think you'll probably see it best if we go into the wireframe mode. Actually, I'll go into, uh, yeah, maybe we'll go to wireframe. Turn off mesh smooth and then turn it back on. And you'll see it just adds uh, more detail and, and breaks down the model um, to give it more more information. So in the end, we're quite happy with this model. It's a pretty solid looking smoke model. It holds the rocket really well. Um, we added this little cylinder here. This is just a straight up cylinder. And that's where the rocket cone actually slides onto. And um, yeah, it really came out really well. It prints really nicely. It's a, it's a high def model and uh, we've been happy with it. So if I get back out, you can see all of the original models again slowly because there's a lot of data here so <laughs> it might take a second there you go and there was a lot of trial and error just as with any good design you really have to kind of test and, and learn things but uh, here's here's the end of the smoke model so one thing we want to mention is uh, a lot of people asked us basically how to get this model from 3ds max into your slicing program because even though you have a, a model here you still have to slice it and print it uh, to do that most programs typically use either an STL or OBJ file. Uh, the STL files are kind of your classic uh, 3D files that have all of your basic information to make a 3D model. I wouldn't say they're the best files, but uh, they, almost every program uses them, So especially in 3D printing. So STL files for now are the way to go. So to, do, to export an STL out of 3ds Max, it's a little cumbersome. You'll notice if you go to the Customize Unit Setup, I'm using free, uh, feet with fractional inches. It don't Please don't tell me anything about metric. I got it. <laughs> but uh, I happen to, I'm using that right now. So we have an, uh, an object in feet and inches. If you export this, it'll not be the right scale because a lot of the programs import in millimeters. And for whatever reason, the STLs don't save that information. Just out of 3ds Max, I know. So really the easiest and simplest solu solution is to um, take your models, scale it up by the correct number and then export that. Uh, in the other program I have, in um, the other 3ds Max version, in the other computer, there's a little script where I click a button saying export XDL and it'll actually scale up for me. So in this case, what I have to do is scale this by 
is 25.4 millimeters or you know, millimeters per inch. So to do that first, now that this model is centered on the world, let's go ahead and go to uh, view world, set the pivot point to be the, the, the you know, base of the world here. I want to go ahead and scale. If you click this button here, you can actually type in the scale you want. So I want 2540%. That's the correct scale for the, uh, for whatever reason. Oh, sorry. We I mean, you know what I have to do. Since I change, whenever you change to different transforms, you actually have to go back and reset your um, your transform area. So now I'm at world again. So now if I do 2540, you'll see it'll actually do it from that base point. So now the model is actually the proper scale to export. The other ones I didn't select are still there. They're just really small because I didn't select them. But all I really want right now is the rocket. So you have to do this for every single every single model you have. But now it's the right scale. Now I can go to file, export. Uh, instead of an FBX, I want an STL file. And then you're going to save it wherever you want it. So whatever your file folder location, whatever. So I want G, G create rocket. Money bank, money bank. Now if I hit enter, uh, binary is fine and selected only. Make sure that's checked. Uh, again, the script I made earlier in Max Script also will delete everything else, so it just will do the selected model. But that's really important. Otherwise, you have a bunch of stuff in your in your file. Hit OK. Now your file's been exported. The key with this is make sure you don't save now because your model will be scaled up. So I always undo and then save. So my model's back to the original size, feet and inches, whatever I was working on. Um, it's kind of a weird workaround, but it seems to work, you know. So I just make sure that whenever I export the STL, I never save. So, hope that helps. So in the end, here is the completed uh, rocket ship with smoke. Uh, it also has the um, the kind of flame here. This is This flame is actually, again, a very simple, just a spline that's been lathed around, so it has a hole in the bottom and a like kind of a peg on the top and that just basically connects the rocket all the way to the smoke and uh, you'll see this is the actually the older rocket we did where it doesn't have the flat spots on bottom and some of these fins or these um, these rocket cones are a little bit thinner but uh, anyway this is the final model you can kind of see it in all its glory and what we're going to do now is take this rocket and we're gonna slice it and 3d print it because Really, you know, half of the process of getting this thing in your hands is actually slicing and printing it, not just the design, because there's a lot of settings you can change and things you have to tweak. So now we've finished designing the rocket, uh, the smoke and the flame, and all the 3D components for the for the 3D print. So if you want to take it to the next stage, which is slicing, uh, we're going to go ahead and slice it in Simplify 3D. So stay tuned for more.